He's going to stop playing games with Jezebel. It's because God showed me. I was reading about Solomon. And God showed me. Like in a split second. Okay. So you've escaped Jezebel a thousand times. But look what happened to Solomon. You should, everything that's written here, if you keep playing in their tennis court, you're going to, you're going to die. So I could play in their tennis court. Solomon, the wisest man to ever live, right? No, oh, uh, Samson. You see what happened to Samson? I was reading a story about Samson. And if you play the game, I could talk about Jezebel's tricks forever. They're just like, one of her tricks. So she'll get with you, and then she'll go over here and get with another guy. But she tells this other guy all these lies about you to justify him being with her, right? And she's really only with that person to get back at you, right? She wants to destroy you. She wants you to kill yourself and all that. And if you start to do good and prosper and it doesn't bother you too much and you've moved on with your life, She'll try to sneak in, say that things aren't working for this situation, even though that's a lie. Which, which I never took. Anybody who left, I never took them back. Anybody cheated or left. Except one time. before I knew all the games. So anyway, all you do is meditate on it. Just think about what they're saying. And if it don't make sense, they're lying. And it's the secret the devil has a multi-level game going on here. This person that you're dealing with, they're, they're not even aware of what's going on. The devil's trying to use them to make you bitter, to make you actually in a copy of them. He's trying to, he's trying to use Jezebel to make you in, like them. That you'll start to... So one of the games that Jezebel does, she tells a lot of lies, right? And she actually wants to get caught in a lie. Because if she gets caught in a lie, you'll say, well, if you're going to lie to me, I'm going to lie to you. See? Then you become a liar. Who did that? The devil. If she's going to cheat on you, you're going to cheat on her, right? Wrong. Wrong. You become a cheater, just like she is. You become a cheater. The devil's a master chess player. He plays at multiple levels. And uh, you become like Jezebel. I only went into... When I got in a situation, I didn't know I was dealing with Jezebel. When I realized I was dealing with Jezebel, I started playing their games, you know, because I saw it everywhere. Actually, Jezebel spirits everywhere. I was trying to show them, hey, I'm smarter than you. I see your game, but I'm not going to tell you I see your game, but you know I see your game because I'm, 
out maneuvering you and I I'm not falling into your trap, you know. But even that mindset was still the game. <clears throat> the way to beat Jezebel is just don't play the game at all. Don't even get involved. Once you see somebody's a Jezebel, a Jezebel spirit, don't play the game anymore. It don't have to be a romantic thing. It can be a business thing. It can be a church thing. It can be a family, bloodline. I was, the reason I was able to see it, I was raised around it. I watched them, the same spirit. I watched them growing up, and I saw my dad die at 50 years old. I saw my stepdad die at 50. I saw uh, some other things going on that's like, it's like these, hey, these women hate men. They're just using and abusing men, and they're trying to flip reality to make it think it's the man. Really. I saw it. My whole life. And I quit playing the game. I played the game for a while. The sad part is so entrenched in this society. It's, it's just, it's hard to, it's hard to find somebody normal, to be honest with you. If you're young, you might as well get, you. it's going to be hard to find a, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a, if you're a man or a woman. If you get married, you're probably in your sage. You're gonna probably marry a Jezebel spirit. Hopefully, you won't, but you probably will. So you might as well do it while you're young, while you got the strength to fight them, because you're gonna they're gonna try to take you to court. They're gonna try to kill you. They're gonna try to defame you. Run. They're gonna be running around. You trying to hide it so that that you don't divorce them. You you really need to do this while you're young. And then when you get out of it, you've had your kids or whatever, and you get out of it, you can call it narcissism if you want. Narcissists are just Jezebel. So you get out of it, don't go back in one. Stay single. Stay single. I have a bunch of friends, but don't get don't get involved in a Jeze in a Jezebel's world anymore. You, you might say, well, I want to get married because I don't want to grow old by myself. What if you get married and they die a year later? What if you get married and it's worse? I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you my observation. I've seen people get married uh, after they've been married to a Jezebel, and they marry one that's worse. It's really wild. You would think they would learn their lesson. I saw this couple. They're both dead now, but I saw this couple across the street. The man's wife died when he was younger, and he made a lot of money at a uh, at a laundry. He owned a laundry. He made a lot of money. He got he became a millionaire at a laundry, with a laundromat. And so he ended up marrying this woman who had just married him for money, and so he was giving her like a six hundred a month, a thousand a month, some kind of. I think he was giving her a thousand a month for some kind of uh, allowance, whatever. And he had a house at a lake, but she had a house across the street from me. And so she, he lived with her. They'd go down to the lake every so often, whatever. But he was pretty much taking care of that house, paying the bills and all that. And then something happened. I don't know if his son got sick or something. Something happened where he had to cut her back to 600 And she was complaining about 600 a month. And they were fighting. They would always, you'd go over there uh, to mow their yard or help them change their air filter, and they'd be sitting on the porch. You'd sit down and talk to them. And if one was inside, they'd say, you know, I, I still, I, get, I cut it down to 600 months. She says, she won't stop irritating me. And, blah, blah. and then when she would come out, she'd say, he don't give me, he don't help me anymore and all that. So I heard both sides. And... He said, then one time I went over there, I was, I always did maintenance to help people. I used to, I don't anymore, because I don't want, they just want a free ride. They want something cheap, you know. But I was learn. I was in the learning process at that time in life. And, uh, and one time 
I was sitting on the porch talking to him. I mean, this guy was a deacon. He was a deacon. And this girl, this lady was in church. And they claimed to be saved. But I realize now what I was doing. And so, it, the only reason he was a deacon, he didn't know the Bible. He actually denied the Bible. One time he said, I said something about the Bible. He says, the Bible's not for today. That was written 2000. I realized, why is he a deacon? He was a deacon in a Baptist church because he had a lot of money. That's the only reason he was a deacon. I'm a deacon. But you're saying the Bible's not true for today? What's wrong with you, man? I dealt. I realized I was dealing with a, an ignorant, demonic, fake person. And come to find out, uh, one time, no wonder he got... No wonder he got the wife he got because he was bragging about he was he was cheating on his wife when he was had that laundromat. These women would come in and he'd be in the back room cheating on his wife while he was running the laundromat. And so he got back what he was giving out. So anyway, so he cut her money down to like a hundred a month or something. And she was threatening divorce and this that and other. He says, I'll just move to my lake house. And so they were miserable, fighting like cats and dogs because he wouldn't give her any money. And he said, I already, the house is paid for. I put a new roof on the house. I did all this. And so she got used to that money. And so when he started cutting her off, he started waking up that that uh, she didn't love him. Right? So I can't remember if he died first or she died. I think, uh, I think she died. Let's see. I can't remember who died first. It might have been him. She might have poisoned him. She probably poisoned him and killed him. And so, let's see, who died first? Oh, he died first. Because he gave his, what happened when he was, before he died, he was, because she was sitting on the porch one day and she said, you know, he's, he put his son on that lake house. And uh, one time he told me, he says, I, I put my son on the lake house because I don't want her kids to get my lake house and my money because they hate me and they're they're just, they they do everything to, to mess with me. So the, the divorce had already started and uh, he died. Come to think of it, she might have poisoned him. So he died. His son got the lake house. A year, a year later, she died. The dynamics, I couldn't remember until. So, yeah. And so I was watching that situation, and I was in a, I was in a fake marriage. I was serious, but she wasn't. And uh, I was observing that, and I was thinking, I don't want to be that way when I'm, when I'm 60 years old, I don't want to be dealing with that. But God was showing me that the Jezebel only cares about money and security because she's insecure. And when you don't give it to her, she made his life a living hell. Hell on earth. For real people. Now, was he guilty? Yeah, he was guilty. So he became, they were both a copy of each other. Because they were together so long, they became a copy. They were doing, they were doing evil to the other one behind each other's back, doing things shady behind each other's back to get on. And then, then I guess he told her, well, I gave, I, I put all my stuff on, uh, to my son. He was probably, he might have been afraid that she's, she or her kids are going to kill him, you know. Because they were married more than 10 years, you know. So she probably thought, well, if he ain't going to give me a thousand months, I'm going to probably poison him and get his Social Security or whatever. And then she died, too. It didn't take long. She was. It might even not have been a year. It might have been six months. But anyway... I watched that scenario and I watched the fact that he was a deacon and he was proud of some of the evil he was doing. And I said, uh, something, all right, this is before I knew what's going on. 
I said, something ain't right. Something ain't right with this picture. And so it's happening all the time. It's happening all over the place. Don't think it ain't happening. It's happening right across the street. It might even be happening in your house. And hopefully you you realize that as long as you associate with Jezebel, she's making a copy of herself. She's turning you. If, if you associate with a narcissist, devil, a demon-possessed narcissist, their whole goal is to make you into a copy of them. And the only way you're going to escape is get away from them. Cut them off. Cut the narcissist off because the narcissist just wants you to be a copy of them because they're not even real people. They're just a copy of a former, uh, a fake reality, a former, they're not even, they're not even real. If you can get a hold of that, you might say, well, why are you de more dehumanize a human? Because they're not real. They have no inner life. There's nothing in there. They're fake. And I wish it wasn't I, I wish it wasn't true, but it's true. When Adam and Eve dropped all of us down into sin, we dropped down into an AI fake reality, a AI program. It's not even real. I promise you, it's not real. And so now the devil's back. Look at that. She's back. I can tell by her her uh, her jaw and all that she's under she's under some kind of judgment she's I don't know if it's drug or what she looks anemic she looks totally anemic uh, the devil's back right there in front of me I got the devil in the flesh right in front of me for you and so that's the same house where those that man and the woman they were living there. <clears throat> and somebody put the house up for sale, her daughter, or somebody, and they ended up uh, the, no, not them, but the parents. So the parents were neat, no, good people. Then the parents died, and the daughter took it over, and it turned into chaos over there. <laughs> I watched a. I watched a Jerry Springer drama unfold for 30 years right across the street. For real. And when I cut the drama off, when I cut Jezebel off, I was able to observe it from a, from a, look, as soon as I pull up, she turns the music up. So I was able to observe it. Listen, listen to this. I was able to observe it because I had peace. See, the really the reason you can't see it is because you don't have peace. They have to put a Jezebel in everybody's life to try to create turmoil, so which is drama, to hide what's really happening. And so he was so caught up. He was so caught up. He had a nice house at the beach in peace. He, I mean, he had a, a house on the lake. He was retired. He didn't have to work. But he lived here with this lady in chaos. And he could have lived at the beach. And he told me, he says, I'm moving to the beach. It wasn't a beach. It was a lake. He says, I'm moving to the lake. He said, I'm tired of this. I can't tell. I'm too old to be fighting with somebody. And he probably told her he was moving and he, she probably poisoned him. Because she didn't want to be by herself. Now look at these people. They're paid agents of the devil. And I might, you might say, well, you saying they're getting money? They don't have to be getting money. It's part of the program. They're paid. They get some kind of reward or acknowledgement from the from the devil. They get moved up in the system. Like in other words, uh, if they can sacrifice a human, if they can sacrifice a human, 
in the devil system, then they're going to be, according to the, kind of like the, uh, yeah, she's going, she's going anemic. She's probably going to not be around much longer. So, wow. So anyway, I'm in shock. So anyway, when they do their sacrifices, or when they do their uh, harassment or persecution, I guess they rise up in a demonic uh, hierarchy. Their hierarchy rises up. And if they can't cause somebody to stumble, if they can't pull somebody back to Babylon, then they don't rise up in the hierarchy. So guess what happens? So if they don't rise up in the hierarchy, they get they get stepped on, right? They fall down. They don't have that. Think about think about people in jail, or think about these gangs. You got to be the toughest. You got to be the meanest. If you're not. If you're not the toughest or the meanest, then what happens? You become the slave. It's they know they're they're a slave to the devil, and they're all uh, codependent on each other. Now think about this: you can actually you can actually figure this out yourself. You don't need me. All you have to do is meditate on this. It's just like a gang. They're codependent. They they're not smart. They have no intelligence. They have no endurance. They have no. They don't really have love. They just. They're insecure, and so they have to rise up in the ranks to have that power. And if they are not as they, if they're not more evil than the next one, then they drop down in the rank. They become a slave, and they can't control their own destiny. They want to be gods. And it's happening in so many places. It's happening in that family. It's, it was happening in the house before. The family before. Well, not the one before, but the one before that. It's happening online. It's happening in churches. It's happening in businesses. It's happening in homes. If you are not evil In the devil system, you're not going to rise up. The more you, the more evil and more deceptive, and the more you take somebody out, or the more you rise up. Think about it. It's a sacrificial, redemptive system. Now, you can take up your cross and follow Jesus, but Jesus already sacrificed for you, and so they don't run to Jesus for that to appropriate what's the payment that He paid. They have to be their own sacrifice, but they don't want to be a sacrifice. They can't take up their cross, so they want somebody else to take up the cross for them. So they want to get in your, just like when uh, when Claire was living there, she was getting that $1,000 a month. She was hot. And then when he started cutting it back, she got mad. She didn't want to sacrifice and work. Or use her money. She was giving, taking hit because he told me he was take. She was taking his money, giving it to her kids. And so they didn't want to sacrifice, but they wanted somebody else. And so they can use the word love, love, love all they want, but it's not real love. It's love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. So it's, it's a sacrificial, redemptive system. So they don't want to sacrifice. So they have to create this fake love. So that somebody will sacrifice for them. Otherwise, they're going to end up in a ditch somewhere. Because they have no power. They have no skill. They have no knowledge. They have nothing, really. And everything they do, instead of it turning to gold, everything they do turns to, turns to dust. Because they're just dust creatures. They're the flesh. They have no ability to sacrifice. And they need to feed off of somebody else. I've seen it in the business world. You're able to fix something. And this one over here can't fix something. So they call you over there to fix something. And then they'll try to take credit for what you did. 
they pull you off your task to get you to do something for them because they don't know how to do it. And then they try to turn around and say, look at me, I did this to take credit for your work. I've seen it a thousand times. It's happening in every business. Every corporation that's happening. And they're master manipulators because that's how they survive. And how did Jezebel master manipulate the whole nation? Because she had to have 450 false prophets. So they always have these people that make them look good. They got to look good in front of somebody. So they have their flying monkeys to make them look good. But then when the bottom drops out, she orders the flying monkeys to be killed because that's because they know the real deal. So they have to get rid she has to get rid of the flying monkeys. Why do you think Putin is killing his generals? Because his generals know the real deal. Those people are dying for a narcissistic psychopath, Putin. It's just a matter of time. Somebody's going to take him out. You can't give to the universe without the universe hitting you back. Whatever you throw out there, you reap what you sow. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. And so Putin is reaping what he sow. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. He's going to ramp it up. He might ramp it up to nuclear, but if he does... It's, there's going to be a response like he ain't never seen. They're actually, it's like a chess match. They're actually letting him destroy himself. Putin is destroying himself. And that's what you have to do with a Jezebel. You let them destroy themselves. <laughs>